All right. So in this case, ladies and gentlemen, again, we are going to have a little issue because if we apply the direct substitution, which again is the first important thing we want to do um, when evaluating the limit, what we see is we have the square root of 5 over 0, right? Which is not going to, um, which is not, we're not going to be evaluate our limit for. So what we're going to want to do is again, First thing is always apply direct su substitution, which we did. And a lot of time, you can just do those by inspection and take off taxes. Um, then the next thing we'll want to do is look into factoring, right? Well, there's really nothing we can factor. And I can tell you a big key is whenever you see a radical, think to rationalizing out the radical. And basically, to rationali rationalizing out the radical, we just need to multiply by the conjugate, which we kind of did a little bit of practice with last class period. And this case is going to be x plus 5 minus the square root of x. And then you, whatever you multiply in the bottom, you have to multiply in the top. Anybody have any questions with what I did so far? Yes. Did I change the problem? So it's square root of 5. That's, wait, what? 53. Oh, it's just square root of, OK, this. Does everybody follow me with what I did? Everybody see why that's the conjugate? Anybody have any questions on identifying the conjugate? Yes, it should be plus. That's four, it's not the conjugate. Very good. All right, so now we have the conjugate. Everything looks good now. Anybody have any questions so far on what I have done? Okay. So let me just go back and remind you, ladies and gentlemen, if you had a minus b times a plus b, basically, a number by its conjugate, this is produces a difference of two squares. Remember, this goes a squared minus ab plus ab plus b squared, so it just gives us a squared minus b squared, correct? The middle terms divide out. So if you have a binomial times its conjugate, notice how it's the same thing as the difference of two squares. In reality, our middle terms are going to cancel out. So we have this term squared and this term squared. So when I go and set the equal this, x plus 5 times x plus 5, I'm sorry, the square root of x plus 5 times the square root of x plus 5 is going to be the square root of x plus 5 squared, which is just going to leave me with x plus 5. Uh, negative square root of 5 um, times uh, positive square root of 5 is going to give us a negative square root of 5 squared, which is just going to leave me with a negative 5. And then over here, I'm not going to uh, factor or sorry, distribute this through. I'm just going to leave it just like this. Obviously, you guys can see that the 5s divide out. The x's divide out, which just leaves me with 1 over the square root of x plus 5 plus, how did I do this problem differently? Equals the square root of 5. Is that what you had on that? Square root of 5 and then it's times the square root of 5. X's divide out. And now we can go ahead and um, evaluate in for the 0, <sighs> which now you can have 1 over 2 square root of 5, which let me double check is my. 1 dash 353. I don't remember that being my answer. Yep. And there you go. Yep. Um, they did in the in the book on the AP um, exam, you don't need to rationalize the denominator. So it's perfectly fine just leaving it as is. And I will accept it in both forms. But yes, in like algebra, we rationalize the denominator and so forth. But in the AP exam, which obviously we're concerned about, they're not going to care if you rationalize the denominator or not. Okay? But we did have to rationalize the radical, though. That's the important thing.